Hello, everyone. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us. It's just such a huge blessing to be able to even gather here. We have a few students actually sitting here in the audience um, participating, which is a huge blessing to be able to even physically gather. Um, so I just wanted to kick us off and first of all, say thank you all for coming both on the live stream and in person. I just wanna reiterate that I am so thankful and I know the student body is so thankful to be here and present on campus each and every single day um, as a community gathered together. So um, I also wanted to express the students thankfulness for this challenging and different year. Even though each day looks a little bit more different than the last, we are just so incredibly blessed to be on campus experiencing a new year of unparalleled and undeniable growth. So we are extraordinarily thankful for that as well. So I just wanted to offer one piece of uh, encouragement real quick to both those watching and to those here in the audience today, that although this is a difficult and challenging year, um, we are not given a spirit of fear, but rather a spirit of self-control and love. So every day when we're a little bit scared um, of what the day may hold or what COVID regulations may change or what guidelines we see here on campus, we can be encouraged by the fact that we have a spirit of love and self-control um, that's been given to us by the power of Christ. And so we can approach each day fearlessly um, and invest in our classes and our communities and our clubs and our organizations. Uh, because one thing that I've been noticing is that students are afraid to dig in here on campus. And I wanna really reiterate that this is our community and you can approach each day fearlessly that we are gonna be here for quite a while. So that's awesome. Um, I also wanted to read over the encouragement of Philippians 1, 6, that the Lord will bring every good work to completion. And so even though things look different this year, this is a part of his will and his plan for your life in this exact moment. Um, so exactly what's going on today, tomorrow, this year, as challenging and different as it looks, um, it is a part of God's plan for your life. So uh, we are just so excited to be here uh, and hear from administration with some updates. And uh, we're just really excited to hear about how campus is doing and hear more from Jim about what's going on. So thank you. Well, hi folks. It is uh, great to be here. I'm joined by Dr. Black, our Vice President of Academic Affairs over in her office. And uh, what a great two weeks it's been. Uh, we are uh, just thrilled to be back on campus and two weeks have gone by and things are are percolating along very nicely. So uh, Dr. Black will help me answer some questions here at the end that I'm sure some of you have. Uh, but let me start with just a, a few comments uh, before we go. Um, and if you're wondering, we do have an audience, but uh, if we have 12 feet, I can be without a mask and that's what I'm uh, doing uh, tonight. But I just want to thank uh, the student body uh, for their adherence to the protocols uh, so far. Uh, we've had a, a good start um, on requirements and restrictions and protocols, and uh, that's just due to the student body uh, trying to make this thing work. You know, I, we are all uh, anxious to be back, excited to be back, but, but this has got to work. Um, for us to be able to be back. Some of you might have seen the Colorado College article um, where they got shut down last week uh, because of a, a group of cases um, and they're not going to be back. Uh, they're, they're sending everybody home by September 20th. Um, uh, so we're trying to, to be in that, uh, in that vein. Uh, we're confident in our protocols and if, uh, if the student body will follow them, we're confident that we can make it through uh, the year uh, and not have to slow this thing down at all. So thank you uh, for doing that. Um, we can, uh, especially outside right now because of the outside mask order, we could do a little better there. Um, watching classes change every day and most of our students are in masks if they're not six feet. Um, but I'd ask you to, to continue to think about if I'm not six feet, wearing your mask outside, um, that's not a state order, by the way. Uh, that is a Jefferson County order um, that supersedes the state. So some of you have said, hey, I didn't see that on the state website. It's not. Um, the outside mask order, <clears throat> excuse me, is actually from the Jefferson County Public Health Department, which is our overseer in this case. So, so uh, I, I've noticed a lot of you playing spike ball without mask. I'd ask that if you can't maintain 
six feet, which is really hard to do in spike ball once you get down to the last little minute there. Um, please wear your mask um, going forward. We've had uh, almost no uh, cases of folks um, not responding, students not responding to staff who have asked them to respond to a requirement or restriction. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, we're not loving this situation where we're having to remind you of restrictions and requirements and that kind of thing. Um, so I just really uh, ask you that if someone confronts you about that and ask you to do something that you be very responsive to that um, and honoring of that person um, who's doing that. Uh, some have, have asked me, um, well, if, if someone refuses to comply, what might happen? And we do have it in the code of conduct for the university that failure to comply is, is in there for a request of a university official. In that situation, you would enter the discipline process and, and we, would, we would go about it in that direction. We haven't had to do that yet. Um, I just noticed that Northeastern University today uh, dismissed 11 students with no tuition refund because of failure to comply um, for social distancing. So other universities are cracking down on this. Um, we haven't had to crack down because of the compliance of our student body. So thank you for, for doing that. So if you're asked you know, by someone to comply, please, please do your best to do that. Several have asked me uh, how enrollment's looking this year. We, we're actually uh, going to complete our 11th straight year of record enrollment. Not by much this year, but we, we're still there. 1,419 students on campus this year. Our third largest uh, incoming class at 462 with 384 freshmen, our third largest freshman class, and 78 transfers who joined us uh, this fall. So the Lord has been good in enrollment, kept enrollment up. Uh, what we're hearing from most Christian colleges across the nation is uh, they are down between five and 15%. Um, and we actually budgeted on a 5% decrease, um, just wondering what COVID would do to us. Uh, but the Lord's been good and brought all you guys back and, and we're thrilled about that. Something that we're just really praising the Lord about is, is enrollment right now um, and what he's uh, given us. Um, many of you are wondering about current cases um, on campus. Uh, we have no current cases uh, at the university at this point. We've only had one positive case since uh, August 19th and that's the day I took responsibility. We took responsibility for you guys on campus. Uh, so the 19th was our opening. Uh, we've only had one positive case um, since then. That was an off-campus uh, case. Uh, we currently have uh, two students off-campus in isolation due to symptoms and one quarantined on campus um, due to a family member who had COVID. Um, so our numbers just couldn't look any better. Uh, we're just, again, um, hoping that's due to a lot of prayer and the favor of God at this point uh, to keep this virus at bay from, from our community. So many of you have seen um, a lot in the press about, um, you know, lots of cases um, here and there. Notre Dame a, a week or so ago had 600 cases um, on campus. Uh, we have been spared uh, a lot of that. And I think um, most of it is because you guys are adhering and being smart to, to what we've asked you to be smart to um, around campus. And obviously the big thing that I've seen um, on college campuses that have had, you know, kind of rampant cases has been the party scene and large gatherings uh, of students not being real smart about what's going on. Um, it, this, this virus in a group gathering can spread very quickly if you're not smart. And we've seen that in, in many, many situations around. North Carolina had 580 cases, I think, right off the bat. And they had to shut down, send everybody home. So uh, we're just thrilled that we're two weeks in, our numbers look great, uh, and uh, we're just really praising the Lord for that. We continue to ask you though um, uh, to do a few things, and, and that's uh, obviously to wear masks. You know, what we're hearing um, is that masks pre pre prevent the spread in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, so inside for sure, you know, when you're close to folks, um, uh, outside when you can't, uh, have six feet of distance. And I'd ask even in your apartments, if you have people, you know, coming down from other parts of the residence hall you don't know or whatever, you know, I'd ask you to just be smart um, on that. Um, you'll notice that our faculty and staff are wearing masks as well in every situation. 
except for situations like this one where um, the uh, requirements allow us to be without a mask. Uh, so join them um, in that. Um, I'd ask that you watch your group settings uh, that obviously with your roommates, we're treating those as family units, that that, that group is okay. Um, but anytime you're together with a large group, you know, please be six feet apart or wear your mask. Let's just be smart there and continue to, to keep this at bay. Continue to talk to your roommates, please, uh, about what they're comfortable with. Uh, we're counting on that and you should have you should have had that conversation um, at the beginning where we asked you to sign a little roommate agreement between roommates about are you comfortable with people coming over are you comfortable with them not having masks um, if your brother's coming to see you um, uh, and i'll talk about that in a minute please please talk to your roommates about that uh, before you do that um, we would not look kindly on uh, a roommate going against their other roommates wishes uh, i feel like that is the basic honoring that you can do right now is that if someone around you wishes something um, that may seem over the top to you, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're really uh, trying to serve each other in this situation. Uh, so please try to try to do that. Uh, be diligent about your outside exposure um, as well. Outside uh, obviously is a, is a good place to be um, because of the ventilation, but uh, just watch your groups, watch your distancing there, uh, watch your large group, gatherings, if you find yourself in a group over 10, especially, um, that you're smart about there. And you guys uh, just must do the surveys twice a week. Those, those surveys are what we're living by right now. Those surveys tell us what's going on. Those surveys put in a, a whole host of protocols that we have in place. Um, and if you don't do the survey, we can't do the protocols in place. Now we have this list down uh, of people not doing the surveys to uh, a very small group. Um, but we just need you to be diligent on those surveys twice a week, um, and you will absolutely be asked uh, not to be on campus if you're not going to do uh, the surveys. So uh, please make those a priority. They take very quick timing, and especially right now after Labor Day, um, we need you to be diligent um, on your surveys. I'd ask you to think about gathering for chapel in in small groups getting together with your roommates uh you know getting together with with your friends um there's been a, a pretty good group in the amphitheater every day for chapel a great room this room is open for you um for chapel um uh probably any one of your professors would be glad to pop chapel on on their way out um after uh you know the um the 925 class so uh, if you ask them, hey, can you just put on chapel? I'm here and then just stay right there in the classroom and with a few of your friends and, and watch chapel. Uh, that's one thing that I'm really missing this year. Um, for 25 years at 1030, I've gotten up out of my desk and walked over to chapel. And uh, this year I've had to remind myself, oh yeah, I've got to bring up the Zoom uh, to even see it. Um, so I think some of you are probably in that, in that uh, um, boat. Uh, Gather for chapel in small groups with your with your roommates, classmates, um, or whatever. And then I just ask you to uh, to continue to take control of of your spiritual activities on campus. Um, getting together for Bible studies, getting together uh, for prayer groups, uh, getting together for for fellowship uh, and encouragement. Um, as always, uh, that you not let uh, COVID stymie that at all. Um, that being smart and under the guidelines that you continue to uh, to get together and gather, that's why many of you wanted to be back um, because you missed that. <clears throat> don't let don't let COVID stymie that at all. Um, uh, do that uh, as you can um, uh, with uh, adhering to guidelines that we've put forward. Um, but I'd really encourage you to continue that. And um, I'd ask that you continue to bubble up uh, issues to your nearest staff members. Policy issues, procedure issues, Dr. Black is here tonight. If you have Zoom issues or whatever, we really want you to bubble those up and to keep those coming. Um, Wi-Fi issues, uh, whatever. Uh, we wanna hear those, we wanna to, to get to them quickly um, because to, one of the reasons to make this work is, is we've gotta to figure all this out together. Uh, so we don't know how to help unless we know where to help. Uh, so we just ask that you, the Senate folks are here tonight, um, your RA, uh, whoever, um, uh, whomever that you, you have around you, please bubble up issues. Now, I know many of you are very interested in, in 
uh, residence hall visitation. Um, uh, that's a, a policy that uh, really I take all full ownership of. I put that into place from the very beginning. Um, if you have friends at other schools, you're probably hearing from them that they have the same restrictions. Um, it's something that, uh, that we put into place, uh, as many of you know, for the first two weeks, especially to kind of get settled and, and to figure out where we're at and, and all of that. Um, so we're ready uh, to look at that uh, policy going forward. And, and I think that the smart thing to do right now is to uh, wait for this Labor Day to get behind us a few days. Um, you know, many of the of the media, as you know, many college presidents were lamenting Labor Day uh, because we knew, you know, students were going off campus. I had probably 50 travel requests last week because all you guys were going to weddings and see your dad and parents and all that. Um, and so I think the smart thing to do is to wait for that Labor Day spike or lack thereof to show itself or lack thereof um, through the Thursday survey. Um, we'll see how that looks and, and then make a decision, you know, late this week um, once this kind of Labor Day is behind us. Typically, as you know, uh, the common sense, common sense out there about COVID is it shows itself between two and four days after exposure. Uh, so that gives us this week to kind of play with that, and, and then we'll see. Um, I am anxious uh, to lift this restriction. I know you guys are anxious to have it lifted. Um, and uh, one question um, is about tomorrow night's uh, discipleship groups because of the weather. I know you've been meeting outside. And so uh, Heidi, Ross, and I will be talking in the morning about that and giving uh, D group leaders their um, way to go on that one. But uh, I think that that's the smart thing to do. And if things look good um, here in about a week, then I think that's a restriction that, that we can lift um, going forward. Uh, commuters and, and off-campus students can visit the lobbies of Rockmont and Yetter. Uh, you, can, you can access the food rooms there. Anybody can access the food rooms there in the lobby. Um, but I'd ask that you would uh, continue to, to keep it um, in the lobby. And for those of you who have uh, found your way up the back stairs uh, to some of our uh, residence halls, um, I just ask that, especially this week, you not do that, that you would really just stay away, um, stay out of each other's residence halls, and know that the time is short here, but let's get this Labor Day um, kind of um, behind us. And then finally, uh, commuters, uh, I know that this, this policy is especially hard on you because you like to go hang out in your friends' rooms between classes. And after the class day is done and it's two o'clock or whatever, you'd like to grab some time over in the residence halls with your friends. And uh, so my heart goes out uh, to you on that. Um, I'd ask you to remember that the amphitheater is always open for you. The great room, uh, if there's not class in here, is open for you. The Laprino, obviously lobby, the Cougar Den, the library. These are areas that we encourage you to, to hang out and invite your friends to, um, to hang out there. But commuters, if you can hang with us just a little bit, um, then we'll we'll talk about what this means for you uh, kind of going forward here after a week. So that's just kind of some of the updates that, that I wanted to give. I'll tell our 60 participants on online here uh, to use the Q&A uh, feature on your Zoom or the chat feature, either one that you might be familiar with, uh, to ask questions and to start those questions coming at this point. I know I have uh, some senators with some questions here in the audience as well that we'll get to. But I really want to kind of uh, just exhort us all from Romans 12:10. Uh, I, I love this verse for what's going on right now in our lives. And it says this, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. And I think that this is exactly what we're asking you to do think of others in this situation think of your roommates think of your professors think of the staff people you're working with um, that's why you're doing these things yes to protect yourself but also to protect the others in your community and i'd ask that you be diligent in giving to hospitality of your roommates whose wishes may not be yours um, on this issue uh, and and really just that uh, all of us have a varying degree of opinion on on COVID. Um, uh, and how 
bad it is and how crisis it is or not, um, I'd ask that you would uh, just not worry about that too much and worry about serving each other and serving your community um, at this point by continuing uh, to adhere to the, to the restrictions and requests um, that we have. So again, uh, thank you uh, for being back. Uh, it's been a great two weeks. Uh, we're kicked off and running. Uh, couldn't be more thrilled um, about enrollment and our COVID numbers uh, and what the Lord has done thus far. Uh, so we're looking forward to just clicking these weeks behind us and getting on with your lives. And hopefully uh, things will, will start to morph in terms of COVID restrictions and we can be back to normal um, here fairly soon. So again, I'm asking you uh, uh, at this period of um, question and answers to uh, take a look at that uh, Q&A and chat button. And uh, we will start that. And then here in a minute, um, I'll ask uh, some of the senators. So senators, if you're ready, you can pop up here and, and be ready. I, I'm just gonna ask you to come in front of the, the deal here and do it so everybody can hear. And this is being recorded um, as well. So we want you on here. So uh, from Kathy, uh, what is being done to fix the Wi-Fi in classrooms and in the dorm rooms so classes online can be effective and do not lag or, or drop the meeting? Um, we, we've been talking about that every day, just talked about it again today in our uh, committee that is uh, our COVID response committee. Um, what we're asking students to do is to give us exact places and times they were on so that we can look at that specific area. Um, uh, telling us the Wi-Fi doesn't work in a residence hall doesn't help us much. Uh, we need to um, uh, we need to know that in room 145 at two my two o'clock class I couldn't get on or I kept dropping off that kind of thing, so that we can send a team up there and and take a look at that. So that's how we're doing it is kind of case by case, just what we're hearing um, and really asking people to be more specific about uh, what's happening where and to bubble that up to us so that we can get on that. Um, Dr. Black and I both have a, uh, a commitment to make sure that our Zoom access is working well, and uh, we've put a lot of time and energy into it. We want that thing to work great. Uh, so we just need to know specific situations um, that it's not working so that we can uh, get to it, our IT folks can get to it. If I could add to that, I could say also that we um, would encourage students who are on campus and Zoom isn't seemed to work for them as well. Um, remember, sometimes it's not the Wi-Fi. We've had a couple of instances already that we were troubleshooting and for one student who's knocked off over and over again, it was her own camera on her own personal computer that wasn't working. Um, and it was the tech people who found that, that it wasn't the Wi-Fi for her. And for others, just um, using an ethernet cable has really solved their issue. And there is ethernet in your residence halls. So Go ahead and um, use a, an ethernet cable hook right in, don't count on Wi-Fi. Um, and that's also a solution. It's not to say that we're not gonna troubleshoot the Wi-Fi, it just means that there are other solutions that are um, get arounds for you. And we have put, put some ethernet cables at the front desk of Rockmont and Yetter. Uh, so you can pop down there and grab an ethernet cable if you don't have one. Uh, from Debbie, uh, did you say that Jeffco has outdoor mask restrictions? So if a student goes to the store, they are to wear a mask in the parking lot, et cetera. The Jeffco uh, outdoor mask restriction is a mask anywhere that six feet can't be, can't be achieved. So if you drive to the store and get out in, in the parking lot, you do not have to wear a mask um, unless obviously you get out into a crowd of people that you can't keep six feet distance in. Um, and then once you get to the store, put your mask on to go into the store. So it's an either, uh, it, it's a, if you can keep six feet, you don't have to have a mask. When you can't, you're supposed to have a mask. That is the Jeffco restriction. And that's our signs on campus. It's either six feet or mask um, outdoors. Uh, that's what we're trying to adhere to. Um, from an anonymous person, uh, why can't we sit inside and social distance if people speaking are allowed to? Why can't we be uh, 12 feet away from each other working on homework in Leprino um, or in class? Uh, ultimately, you could be, um, but the state has put in a inside mask restriction. So the 12 feet is for speakers, 25 feet for singers. Um, but if you are inside, um, you have to be um, with a mask. 
Uh, so you can't be inside and distance right now, uh, according to the governor. Um, and if you are in a classroom setting and 12 feet away, you can remove your mask and speak. But we are doing, as you know, uh, in classes, um, all our professors are either masked or shielded up uh, for your safety um, uh, either way there. So our pretty much our working protocol is that everybody's in a mask um, at this point. Okay, senators, anyone have a question they want to come up with? I was told there was questions. Jordan, come on up. Yeah, the question is, um, are we expecting or do we expect throughout the course of the semester to maybe see an update in off-campus speakers being able to come on campus either for club events or for panels or so on so they can be in person rather than over Zoom? Thank you, Jordan. Uh, yes, um, Dr. Black is already working on her visiting professor list and, and they are um, allowed in the classroom and professors are having um, uh, their guest lecturers come in um, under a, a protocol. Uh, we do have some uh, chapel folks coming in to be live. Uh, and when we do, we'll allow a, a small group. We can have a hundred um, in there. We'll allow that group uh, to come. Um, right now, um, most of our um, special speakers that are, that are planned are going to be on Zoom um, just for the, the large groupness of it, if that's a word, groupness. Um, so we are doing little things here and there. We, we do have an outside visitor restriction right now, so no outside groups, that kind of thing. Um, but we're handling those case by case. And um, uh, outside visitors, uh, professors in the classroom are approved and Dr. Black is working on them and, and things are starting to percolate there. Um, and uh, we do have some chapel speakers that are coming um, as well. So really right now, that whole thing is really based on um, the size of the crowd we can have. We can only have 100. So uh, to us, to have a big speaker, you know, you wouldn't have that just for a crowd of 100, so you might as well go ahead and Zoom it. And uh, as you guys know, we have access to more chapel speakers because of Zoom right now, because they don't want to travel. Um, so we've only had a couple who said, I want to be on site. Um, many have said, I, I won't come unless I can do Zoom. Um, so it's not always our idea either. Sometimes it's the speaker who says, love to come speak, but I'm not going to travel. And so we'll do them by by Zoom, so. Okay. I, that's more of a comment than a question. Thank you very much for that, for that uh, comment. Um, Julia says, has there been any discussion of the scenario where students would go home at Thanksgiving, stay home and finish the semester online, then return after the new year? Yes, exactly, Julia. Um, we are, uh, many schools adjusted their schedules so they'd be done by Thanksgiving. We felt it was too late in the summer to do anything like that with almost 60% of our students out of state. Uh, we didn't want to spring that late in the summer uh, to anyone because of travel plans. Uh, so we're, we're going to go right through the semester as planned. Um, but we do have a scenario with the excellent job that our academic side has done with the Zoom scenario where that if you go home for Thanksgiving and want to stay home and finish the semester uh, online, um, you can do that via a simple request. Um, so we're going to have a protocol for students coming back after Thanksgiving, just like the baseline protocol we did when they showed up here in August. So we'll go through our safety steps there. Um, but uh, if you want to request to just remain home and finish the semester online, uh, then you, you're able to do that. Dr. Black, do you have any more comments on that? So the request for staying home after Thanksgiving would be the same for any other kind of um, semi-permanent kind of request for um, Zooming into classes. So all of our classes are Zoom friendly um, and uh, that doesn't mean it's perfect yet. There are some still hiccups that we're working on, especially here in class discussion. Um, that's the one we're working on right now. But other than, than things that we're working on to make sure that the Zooming students have a good experience, 
Um, we are ready for students who choose not to come back after Thanksgiving to um, be able to finish the semester without being in person. So not a problem. You do have to formally request it. It's not automatic. If your um, professors um, you know, give you any feedback about that, you can always contact me. I am available to you. I want to answer your questions. I want you to come to me with some of your academic issues. I'm happy to help. So um, yeah, make your Thanksgiving plans. Um, think of your, your health, please. Think of your family's health, please. I think of the way that you involve yourself in the community and how important that is to you, please. We wanna be open for your, um, your, your presence here, but if you cannot, that's okay too. We, we understand. A uh, quick question I had was whether or not there will be an adjustment made for ministry hour requirements, given that it's harder to find opportunities off campus and there's more need for on-campus work like ETAs and things like that. Is that gonna be adjusted at all or are those like ratios and stuff? Thank you, Mr. Jansen. Well, what we're kind of doing right now is, is I'm saying, let's, let's just keep that the way it is and then just kind of see how that plays out. Um, so just like we did last spring, we kind of kept it the way it was and then we gave people chapel credit, you know, last spring and, and did it that way. Um, uh, I, I don't want to be hardcore on that at all. Uh, and I'm just saying, all right, let's just kind of see how that goes. Continue to try to do your ministry as, as you had planned to do it. And if we hear from students toward the end of the semester that, you know, this wasn't a semester where we could find many ministry opportunities, then we're glad to adjust it. So, um, not worried about that at all. Uh, you guys shouldn't worry about it at all. Move along in your plans. Um, if your plans don't come to fruition and we're hearing from a lot of students, then we'll adjust it toward the end of the semester um, before we get into the spring. I need to follow up on um, one part of a question that wasn't answered for the Thanksgiving people who want to um, request uh, remote learning after Thanksgiving. Um, the final part of that question said, do we have to request it from each professor or can we just request it from one? Remember that everything is centralized. There's one form. And then the form actually feeds to all of the deans and the professors that it, it feeds through your account. So we already know what classes you're registered for. And that goes to the professors, it goes to the deans. However, I will say that professionally, it's very nice for you, it would be very nice for you to um, talk to your professors and say, this is my plan. I'm going to fill that form out. I plan to zoom in or um, be synchronous, remote, in a different format if your professor is doing a different format. Um, after Thanksgiving, let them be aware of it so that you just don't show up as a name on, a, on an announcement to them. Um, they get a daily announcement and, and just having your name there might startle them. So go ahead and talk to them, be professional about it. Um, treat this um, whole situation with your professors as you would any other kind of absence where you are in constant communication and that you show them how much you really want to do well and they can show you how much they care. Okay, I'd say to our Zoom audience, I'm, I'm looking for any more uh, questions here. I'm not gonna prolong this any longer than we need to. Um, I'm, uh, my audience is out of questions, it looks like, Madam President. Uh, so uh, I don't see any more there. Uh, we are being showered with blessings today. We've got about an inch of blessing on the ground so far. And uh, I'm, I'm watching what has to be Arizona and Texas students and um, loving uh, the snow right now as they come to eat in the dining hall. Uh, so um, many of you uh, might say, oh my, it's already snowing in Denver, winter's already there. Uh, we get this all the time, um, every now and then. Uh, we'll be right back into the 70s and 80s later this week. Um, this is just an early reminder that we uh, do live at altitude. And uh, sometimes the Lord says, uh, hey, you guys are at altitude, I'm gonna give you some snow. So it's a beautiful evening here. Um, at 25 till 7, the, the snow is lightly coming down and, and uh, students are, are playing in the snow right now. Uh, are there, uh, from Hannah, are there any thoughts about whether we will return to campus in the spring or is that too far out to determine? Well, um, uh, I hope that, that we are off and running for the entire year here. We're sure planning on it. Dr. Black on the academic side is planning on the year. The student life side is planning on the year. The president, uh, everybody is just planning on this year unfolding um, as it would in terms of that, uh, all things being equal. 
Uh, so we're not uh, very concerned right now about whether we're going to be uh, closed or open. Um, we are plowing through as if uh, we're going to be open. Um, and as I watch the numbers in Colorado and as, as, as you guys watch the numbers even nationwide, um, they're in an encouraging direction. Uh, Colorado especially is in an encouraging uh, direction. Our numbers are very encouraging. I don't know how they could be any more encouraging um, here on campus. And the campuses that have been in trouble have these huge outbreaks. Um, and so I feel like if we get through Labor Day here and then get through Thanksgiving um, without uh, big outbreaks for us, that we'll go right into spring semester and, and be good. Although obviously um, we didn't think we'd be here in March um, with all these restrictions and everything. So, so we can't foretell the, the future um, on that one. Um, the only thing we can do diligently uh, is what we've done for the last six months is to continue to put our protocols in place that we feel comfortable with to keep our students safe and, and to keep them healthy and to keep them moving in the right direction. And then uh, to turn it over to the one who knows all plans and to say, Lord, it's up to you. Um, we're doing our diligence, uh, uh, taking your lead, but Lord, it's up to you on, on how this all comes together and how it all plans out. So our best response to this, in my opinion, I ask everybody online here with us, is just to uh, continue to pray to the Lord that he keeps the virus at bay at CCU. Uh, that he keeps Colorado going in the right direction and that we're able to continue to do what we want to do here um, through impacting students and their experience in college uh, for him. So uh, that's, that's all I can say about that is we don't know the plans. Um, the Lord does uh, uh, and, and we're relying on him every day to, to take us down the road. There's a question that came in that Jim will read, but I want to um, just talk about um, some questions that I've gotten personally from some students on campus. One student um, especially was concerned with um, our message that we have 97% of our classes in seat, and yet that student was asked to zoom in, even though that student is present and desired to be in seat. Um, the student was asked to zoom in a few times this semester. So one of the things that we did, and I'll, I'll give you the background on this, um, you'll remember that those of you who are not new students, those of you who are returning students, you enrolled in March, you enrolled in all your classes. And we had a decision to make over the summer, do we disenroll everybody, completely wipe the slate clean, and then refit our classes into a social distancing protocol, and then have everyone re-enroll? That was one way to do it. Another way to do it was to allow the classes that were already enrolled to go, and as they go, um, move them into rooms big enough for social distancing. That's why we have the Anschutz um, Great Hall as one of our rooms, the Anschutz Great Room, or Game Room as one of our rooms. Give us bigger rooms so that we can spread some of those up, cascade up, have a few of the middle-sized classes go into the larger rooms, the larger classes go into the, the bigger non-traditional classrooms. We chose that second scenario. Um, but it also meant that we had so many classes in that 20, 25 range, that small to mid-sized range, because we're a small co college. We, we really value this contact and this intimacy that we have with our students. So many of them that we had to do what the airlines do is we overbooked. We overbooked um, one, two, three students in order to put people together and keep the keep the enrollment and the times that you chose and the days of the week you chose and whether you're a morning person and you wanted the eight o'clock or whether you want to sleep until noon and wanted the 305s we, we let your enrollment stand and then we tried to do those classes and, and so therefore there's overbooking so i'm what i'm coming down to say is that um our message has been 97 percent of our classes are in seat and we do have some rolling Zoom students, and maybe up to three times a semester, maybe even four times a semester if you're in a class that was really pinched, um, where we ask individuals to Zoom. But then the other 26 times in the semester, or 28 times in the semester, you can be in seat. Um, so I, I wanted to explain that and make it very clear that our message was not meant to um, blindside you, but to, to show that we 
totally wanted to honor students who had pre-enrolled in March and we did not want to wipe their slates clean and then have them all re-enroll classes that would start perhaps at 7 a.m. and go till 7 p.m. We just decided to keep the days and the times similar and just put our classrooms in an expanded form in order for um, those things to fit. So I, I need to make that clear. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Black. That's great. Uh, last call for questions. I'm gonna put it out. I have two more here. Um, when a student goes out of state <clears throat> to come home for Thanksgiving, will they be required to quarantine upon their return? No, um, they won't be. As, as you know, uh, I think everybody in the nation now has dropped that interstate quarantine period. Um, the CDC has dropped that as well. Uh, so we would follow that guideline um, and not make people re uh, quarantine. If you were from out of state <clears throat> in August when you came to campus, we didn't make you quarantine either. We made some of you do daily temperature checks for the first two weeks. You're probably just getting out of that now. Um, and that's, uh, we will do a baseline check on everybody coming back from Thanksgiving, just like we did when we opened. And then we will rely on that survey uh, to let us know what's going on. And that's why that survey is so important. Um, uh, we want to know in that survey what's going on with you so that our protocols can kick right into gear. Uh, and so uh, we will do that on the way back. Dr. Black, I don't know if you see this question about the One Act Festival, uh, but Dr. Black may be better to, uh, to um, uh, answer that. We, we are right now restricting visitors to campus, except for a case-by-case -case basis and obviously immediate family members for students living on the residence halls. Um, but you may have a comment yeah, on the One Act. So the One Act Festival, those of you who don't know and haven't seen the advertisement yet, is gonna be very exciting. It's outdoors. It's outdoors and it's gonna be a theater crawl. And these art crawls have been very popular in the last five or 10 years all over the country, where um, you go to one small venue and you get an artistic experience and then you move on to another small venue for an artistic experience. And the One Act Festival is being provided in this way where we have four One Act plays that are written by students, produced by students, directed by students, and also acted by students. It will be outdoors. And for that reason, the, the answer to the question that the, the student asked about whether can a visitor come on campus and attend one of these um, one act plays or se several of them come to the whole festival? The answer is yes. Um, we do not restrict people from coming across campus. You'll see neighbors um, from Westford walking their dogs across campus. Um, they're outdoors. They're not allowed in the buildings. They're not allowed in your classroom. We have protocol for that. Um, we have a, a certain protocol for the library for public patrons, the very few public patrons who come to the library from off campus. Um, but for indoor kinds of groups, if we had an indoor group that we were somehow hosting, we would be restricting that right now um, on a case-by-case -case basis. We do evaluate every request, but this is an outdoor festival and yes, we will have some restrictions in place for the number of people in pods outdoors so that people are not sitting together. They'll be distanced outdoors, um, but there will be um, availability for some outside people, some guests that you invite to come to the One Act Festivals. In fact, we welcome them. We celebrate the arts and we've got a robust program for you this year. Well, seeing no more uh, questions on the list here, um, I wanna thank uh, President Courtney, President of Student Body to, uh, on having us here, here tonight. And uh, this will be posted on YouTube. So if you know someone who had one of these questions or <clears throat> excuse me, wants to know a little bit about what's going on, uh, during this time, you can direct them to the CCU YouTube page um, over there and, and you can see it there. Dr. Black, any last words? I do wanna thank the students for your patience for the first few weeks as we have um, a lot of technology and as some of our uh, folk joke, um, the technology is sometimes so complex that the PhDs can't, can't figure it out. Um, but for the most part, I think a lot of the bugs are worked out. We really, really, really appreciate um, being able to serve you as our instructors. I told this um, little uh, scenario to um, the future implementation team today, the COVID response team, um, that there is a faculty member on campus who was talking about masks and what it's like to teach in a mask or a shield. And the faculty member said this, I would wear a beekeeper suit 
if I got a chance to, to work with these students. The faculty here at CCU just love you. They want to be with you. They're willing to wear beekeeper suits if they need to, just to be with you and to teach you. And we really are committed to your education. We're committed to furthering your um, walk with Jesus Christ, furthering your academics, your critical thinking. We want to be there for you. So um, my last word to you is thank you for your patience. Um, please contact me if you're having issues that I can help with. I really, really, really want to help you. Thank you. Good to see members of the Student Senate here tonight. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, let's ask the Lord to be with us. Lord, we just give this all to you. We know that you have a plan for it. We know that you have a direction for it. And you know that in all things, you want to be glorified. So Lord, we just ask that you be glorified somehow through this, uh, that we are able to, to display your splendor um, through this uh, as a campus, as a student body, as a roommate, as a friend, as a student. Uh, Lord, we want to display your splendor. So Lord, uh, we just thank you for the two weeks that you've given us. We just ask that you would keep this virus at bay from our community. And Lord, that you would protect us. You would give us direction. Lord, that you be with our state, our national leadership during this time in our country. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for the blessings that you give us every day, including about the inch of blessings you've given us in the last couple hours. Lord, we just give you all the glory, power, and honor you deserve in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with us, everybody.